Um, my name is Daquan Beaver. I'm born and raised in Richmond, Virginia. Um, I just had a birthday. I'm 24 years old and I'm a formerly incarcerated individual. So I was incarcerated at the age 14 for a robbery charge. Me and about five other individuals, um, I went through it. I was the youngest of out of the five individuals and um, I was sentenced to 48 years, certified as an adult, so which means I had to go into circuit court, adult court no longer, and juvenile court. And um, I was sentenced to 48 years. And I tell my mom all the time, like, when I was sentenced to 48 years, I feel like I was, like, forced to be a man right there in the courtroom because, like, I got the grown man time. Um, while in the juvenile justice system, I guess after about three years, I, I had, like, an epiphany almost. Um, I begin to see things that I've seen every day, but they just seem like more wrong to me, like the way guards would talk to us. They would tell us we have no rights. Um, there was a unit that was put in front of the whole facility. Everyone had to pass them, and it just happened to be the unit with residents that had mental illnesses. And um, it was just a lot of things that I felt like we, I needed to speak up on. So I began to eavesdrop and listen to like small conversations, a little creepish, but I, was, I just wanted to see like what, the, what other people, what other residents were talking about, like what they felt were wrong. And I would write them down and I brought it to administration. And at first it didn't work, but um, we began to write petitions and things of that nature. And we eventually start seeing some kind of change which gave myself as well as other residents motivation that our voice can count if we work together. So I do not think that the adult system is anywhere for a kid because the, the key word there is adult, right? Um, I personally know that a lot of, especially boys, they get 14, 15, like I'm a grown man, I'm a grown man, but Realistically, your mind does not like stop developing until after like 21 for a guy, I think, or 22. So um, we have kids that may think, and may have a physical build of a grown man, but mentally they're not ready for the adult system. They need still need education. They still need someone to talk to. Like they're not finished developing. So I don't think the adult system is anywhere that any child should be. I think the juvenile justice system is, I mean, I guess if you have to say, then the juvenile justice system is better than the adult system. However, the juvenile justice system still needs work as well. I think it's better in regards to education. It's better in regards to uh, health, like uh, the healthcare situation. But. When it comes to DJJ and DOC, the facilities are almost identical. You know, like what they look like, what they feel like, what they smell like, the food that's served. So, I mean, it's kind of like a lose-lose for me, but if I have to choose, I would say, yeah, DJJ is doing a better job than DOC is. So, I think race and ethnicity play a huge part in um, both juvenile and the criminal justice system. Um, first of all, there is an uh, extremely higher percentage of uh, African American and Latino uh, youth and adults in our uh, correctional facilities right now. That does not mean, and this is statistics show that it does not mean that, you know, black kids commit more crimes than white kids, right? Uh, so if we have a chart to show that, you know, well, this guy who happens to be black committed the same crime as this guy who happens to be white, and this guy is in the street and on a uh, in a class or a probation and this guy has five years in jail and you know so yeah I think it plays a, a huge role. I personally like to like step out of the box. Um, I think a lot of people when they hear like alternatives or a continuum 
um, of services, they think of locked facilities or facilities that have to look like a jail. Um, I ask the questions to my youth and um, the questions are, what is something that you always wanted to learn? Like period, take juvenile justice, take everything out. Like what is something that you want to learn and what's something that helps you cope? And the answers that you get from those two questions tell you what this youth need, what alternative would, that would help this youth succeed. And you will get answers from like, I wanna learn how to sing, so I wanna learn how to build a house, right? So if you have youth that just want to strive, you just have to tap into what that specific person wants and we can have a world where no youth is locked up. Prisons don't work. Prisons do not work. Um, and I think we, as a people, need to come together and realize that we're prosecuting children, our leaders of tomorrow, and we need to come together and build them instead of break them down because I could have easily been another kid lost in the system, you know, back and forth inside the facility, but I'm here because I had a I had a support system, I had people to believe in me, I had people to push me. It doesn't mean I'm smarter than anyone, like I just had someone to tell me, look, you need to go this way. And we can be that person or those people for our upcoming generation.